Hello. So we're in Christianity and the Social Crisis, Walter Rauschenbusch, page 133. The subheading now is The Leaven of Christian Democracy. The history of Christian charity has been a favorite part of popular church history. It's delightful to think of heathen men coming under the influence of Jesus and the Christian church and developing such tenderness of affection and such ardor of self-sacrifice amidst a world without love. But Christianity was not simply the culture of the faculty of love. It brought with it a strong leaven of democracy and protest which unsettled men. It created social unrest and carried disturbance in its train. Shortly after Paul left the little church at Thessalonica, he got word that some of the Christians there had quit working. They seemed to have been unusually poor. Consequently, the hope of the Lord's coming had taken powerfully hold on them, a powerful hold on them, and they expected it immediately. But if relief was coming so soon, why go on breaking their backs? It is all very well for men in comfortable armchairs to write about the dignity of labor, but those who have had nothing but labor in their life have an instinctive hankering for the dignity of leisure. Grinding social pressure and tense millennial expectations have again and again in the history of Christianity caused crowds to drop their work and wait for the Lord, who would be their emancipator from drudgery. Paul very wisely explained to them that the Lord's coming was not quite as near as they supposed, and that in any case, he that will not work shall not eat. And that text is 2 Thessalonians 3, verses 6 to 15. At Corinth, the social unrest seized the women. They felt the hot promptings of the Spirit in their souls, just like the men, and rose to prophesy. They too felt their intellectual life enriched with new thoughts and a wider outlook. Why should they not have the right to teach in the church? They felt the emancipating sense of equality and the glad sweep of the new brotherhood in the meeting and put off the veil which the lustfulness of men and long-standing social inferiority had compelled women to wear when in presence of strangers. Paul, in one of his bold prophetic strains, asserted that in Christ all the old distinctions of race and social standing would disappear including the difference between man and woman. The spirit of Christianity has accomplished that result in the slow progress of centuries, and our women are now free and are equals. If these Corinthian women try to take at once that heritage of liberty, which was to be theirs eventually, we cannot help sympathizing with them. But we can also understand the unusual vexation and distress in Paul's mind when he heard of this disorder and agree with his prudence in bidding them keep within the bounds of customary modesty and restraint. The social unsettlement even reached family relations and created a religious tendency to divorce. There were Christians who felt that it was impossible for them to live a Christian life while married to a heathen. The question whether it was not the right or even the duty of a Christian to sever so inca incompatible a relation had become so pressing at Corinth that was one of the chief subjects of, on which the church consulted Paul by letter and committee. There were others with whom the new passion for sexual purity had awakened scruples even about the relations within wedlock, and who were ready to assert the right of the individual to himself on high religious grounds. Here too we have the anticipation of later results of Christian influences, a keener feeling that marriage should rest on spiritual affinity and sympathy, and not on physical or conventional grounds, and a finer sense of the right of the soul to its own body. Of course, it is exceedingly likely, as human nature goes, that in some cases old dislikes and aversions were simply seeking cover under these new religious pleas. But in any case, it must have been a leaven of unrest in various families. I'd like to link to a video we did on marriage and Jeremiah. The next time Paul goes on talking about social unrest in a different context. Rauschenbusch analyzes Paul's response to some unrest among Christian slaves.